Michael Weston. It's Michael Weston. Hope all is well. Hope that you're staying safe out here during this quarantine. Hope you're banging out so many beats right now and just getting so much better than you were the day before. Today I figured we do something a little different. I want to do a tutorial on sampling. Shout out to one of my subscribers. He reached out to me. He told me that sampling is something that he feels like a lot of YouTubers don't really cover well as far as Ableton goes. So here pulled up, I have a beat I made about two months ago, I believe. Um, I took this gospel record by the Como Mamas. Yeah, the Como Mamas titled Out of the Wilderness. Sick song. I went ahead and chopped it up, man. It's giving me a nice little Jesus is King vibe, you know what I mean? Like my favorite song with Jesus is King is Follow God. And I feel like this has that similar, that similar feeling to it, man. Like that, that dope chopped up sample, hard drums. Let's go ahead and listen to the beat real quick. Go All right, so that's pretty much that's literally the base idea of the whole beat and then it goes back into that first main sample chop so something like that. you feel me i'm gonna go ahead and try my best to take you guys through my whole process of sampling in this record. So down here, I have Out of the Wilderness by the Como Mamas. Uh, that's a crazy fire name they got. So the Como Mama record right here, if you're new to Ableton or not, you probably noticed that when you drag certain songs and certain samples, certain loops into Ableton, Ableton doesn't always do the best job at finding the tempo. They do a better job than most dolls, but, um, for the most part, it's not always it's not always the best detection. But for this song, it was spot on. When I dragged it in, Ableton detected that it was at 85, you know, BPM. So it's saying that it's 85, and that's probably fact. That's probably factual. This record probably is around the 85 uh, BPM. But when we play it with the metronome. It's off. Tell me how did you feel when you when you when you tell me how did even though it's off, I will say it's not dramatically off. I've I've had to sample some records that were just so off, man. It was the biggest headache. But this record, um, it's bad, but it's not that bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the metronome off. Before we even get into warping and getting the tempos right, let's just find what's most important. Let's find the, sec the sections in the record that I actually want to flip. I'm gonna continue to play it from right now. Tell me how did you feel when you The intro's dope though. That's it, and, and, and it was just like that. When I dragged this record in and I heard that part, it's a freaking rap. So yeah, so so boom. So now, I'm, I'm, I'm just clicking around. Right here, that kick drum, that kick drum uh, transient, right here, that's where I wanna start from. That's where I wanna start chopping and dissecting the sample from. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna drag this flag. Drag it to 
I'm gonna drag it right to the beginning of that kick. So this around here. When you drag that flag, what is what's it's doing is it's, it's the start mark. It's changing. As you can see, all the other area of the song is gone. And now this now the record is starting right from here. Right from that kick drum. So now since I did that, I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. I have this this spot, this section of the sample that I want to specifically start chopping up. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click this flag. I'm gonna click warp from here straight. Okay, boom. What that did was that just that gave us one warp marker here, and that's it. Now let's go ahead and just turn that metronome back on and see how does it sound just by doing that. Where are we at now with the, with the sample? Oh, and also guys, I'm gonna go ahead and change this uh, warp settings to Complex Pro. Um, let's start with Complex. That's, that already sounds great. So, first big tip, you know what I mean? That can that can really help you save some time when you're trying to sample. This this warp flag right here, um, it's like the beginning, um, like the beginning mark right here. You want to drag that to the downbeat. Always drag this flag to the downbeat, and then. Right click, like how I showed you, right click and warp from here straight. And then match it up with the tempo. And see how, how does the metronome sound with the record then? Because you probably won't even have to do anything else as far as timing goes. So now it's time to chop. Now it's time to find a groove. I'm just listening to the record now, and with Command E on a, on a Mac, with Command E, I'm going through and I'm chopping up the waveform. I'm chopping up the specific sections that I want to make a beat out of. So I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. A big part of sampling is, is just listening to the music. So let me go ahead and build up that, that uh, verse groove. This was the first one. So let me go ahead and just command T. I'm gonna open up another track. I'm gonna drag this down here. I'm going to mute that one. Actually, it was this one, guys. This is the one. You guys, it gives me goosebumps just how, just how perfect. It was like, it was meant to be when I found this record. That's the basis of the verse. But I do remember that on the on the ending, on the last on on the last shot, I freaked a little bit more. Command E. I'm just let's see what happens when I take the kick drum on beat one and add it to three.
and you have it. And, and you know, I, I pitched down. guys i'm not gonna let myself off the hook like that like i said that record was pretty much a layup um sometimes when you drag records into ableton ableton doesn't really give you that much of a hard time as far as getting like the tempo and the sample to match up but let's see if i can find a record or a sample that is not as easy as that last song <laughs> Here we go, guys. Here we go. Like I said, I'm listening right now. I want to figure out where in the sample I want to I want to chop and make my own. You guys, this is a start marker. Like, I'm telling you guys, like, there's so much in Ableton. I looked over here in my info window, and you see it, start marker. So my bad, earlier I was, I don't know what the heck I was calling you. Always make sure that you highlight it, highlight the sample after you make a cut. straight that's just something that I do um just something that I do I'm gonna go ahead now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the metronome let's see where we're at let's get it so now it's, so now guys we're gonna get into warping so um I mentioned earlier that these white markers up here these are warp markers. You want to use these to stretch and to bend this waveform into time. So I'm going to listen and I'm going to be looking at this waveform and I'm going to be looking at the grid and I'm going to be making some very critical decisions into what's off beat and what's on beat. And what here's the beauty about warping. You, the producer, you're in charge of like freaking determining what's in time and what's not in time. You're in charge. Like like when, when I first got Ableton, warping used to stress me out. Like bro, I used to dread having to warp. Like I knew it was a dope feature. I knew it was a game changing feature. Let me screw up the sample um, so I can show you guys just how powerful it is. I'm gonna take this random warp marker and I'm gonna just stretch it out. So, I'm listening to the metronome. I'm listening to the metronome, and the first decision I want to make, adjusting one of these warp markers, I'm not even sure which one is going to be yet, a forward shift to get, to get this sample to line up with the second beat of the metronome. I took that one, I chose to just drag it. What I did was I clicked and I dragged, dragged it to the left. Trial and error, guys. It's speeding up, but don't worry. Keep in mind, you're, you're in control. Like it's, it's speeding up, but if I want to slow it down, I will, and I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that. Very simple. I'm, I'm listening and I'm looking at the waveform. Let me make this bigger. I'm paying attention to the fourth 
beat of the metronome, which will stop right here at 27. But I've noticed here, I'm looking at the waveform, and this is a very important event, and it's coming in too early in comparison to the metronome. I need to drag this back. So click, and let me hold it down, hold it down shift. Let me go ahead and just pull that back. And when I mentioned I was holding down shift, I was holding down shift and dragging this to, to move this without interruptions, without being uh, interrupted by the grid. But after I got it to exactly where I want to be on the sample, I let go of it and I just went ahead and just dragged it to 27. So now I'm gonna just double click that. I'm gonna go ahead and just loop this. I'm gonna show you guys that we have a very usable just loop. You know what I mean? So you can go ahead and slow down that tempo if you want. I want to now chop this up, but I want to chop it up according to my keyboard or according to my MIDI controller, whatever I have, my, my, my Ableton Push or whatever I'm using. You can go ahead and right click this. Slice to new MIDI track is what you're going to do. Slice to new MIDI track and this, this one is going to pop up our warp markers set up. All of these orange things down here are the warp markers. So, so if I go ahead and choose that option, the chops are going to be lined up according to my keyboard and according to the orange warp markers. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And what it did was it opened up another mini track. We see, this is actually a drum rack down here that has all of the slices aligned. I'm gonna go, go ahead and delete this. But before I delete it, I can play it. So, just to show you. It's just, it's just playing back the, the record. Keep it simple. Just getting, a, just getting a drum break in there. I'm gonna go ahead and warp this one up too. Possibilities are endless in Ableton. You can do whatever you want. There's no rules in music. So I hope that you guys learned a bunch in this video. But there's so many different ways to sample. There's even ways to sample that I didn't even mention in this video. But those are two of the basic ways that I sample. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and turn on those notifications. Make sure to leave me a comment. I'm always in there showing love, reaching back out to you guys who show love to me. If I lift out anything, my bad, you know what I mean? Let me know, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm growing with you guys, like let me know. If you have any questions, any more questions, anything that I didn't cover or any problems that you're running into when you're making beats, you can reach out to me on social media. Everything is at Michael Weston. This is the time for all producers to not focus on the negativity of the outside world, but to lock in and just become a beast. Thank you so much for watching. I'm out.